There is one sound that happens this time every year that has gay men over 50 either running to hide, jumping for glittery joy, or sending most of us into a state of panic. That sound is Mariah Carey singing All I Want for Christmas. That's right, folks. The holidays, they are a-coming. Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the podcast that brings the mature gay male voice back to the conversation. Hello, everyone. I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And Michael, before we actually jump right back or right into the holiday season and seriously saying holiday season is giving me palpitations, we have to discuss what just happened this last weekend here in our beautiful Palm Springs. And I'm assuming you're not referring to a really bad date I had, but gay pride. Gay pride. It was Palm Springs pride. It's weird because mostly uh, cities have their pride in the summer around June, right? But this here is your pride. June Palm is pride month. Springs, we have pride in November. So the city was crazy this weekend. Like every street was blocked off and... There were so many people here, and I know that you were out and about, as was I. So tell me, tell me all about your Pride weekend. Well, it was pretty spectacular. It was very full and um, very broad range of things that I did. Um, I marched in the parade this year with the center, the LGBTQ center here in Palm Springs. And I also worked their booth, which was a blast. Cool. Um, Saw Adina Menzel and Lisa Lisa, who were part of the entertainment lineup here. Um, yeah, and just, you know, a lot of social stuff, and it was fun. And um, it, 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 and it, it's just one, I love Palm Springs Pride because it's such a huge array of different folk. We have everything here, um, you know, because there's some prides um, where it's very specific, very male oriented um and here it's not that case and you know there's a it's a it's a, it's a virtual rainbow of ages and sizes and shapes and sexes and it's it's just awesome you know cool what was your experience uh pride for me was a lot different this year uh, as i've talked about and as you know i was part of the planning committee for the hrc garden party and VIP, two different events, um, which took place over Pride. So um, it was so much work, uh, but it was great. The garden party had over 500 people there. All of the local politicians were there. We had movie stars there. Uh, it was at a great house. It, um, and the estate that was built for Mary Pickford way mm -hmm. back when, uh, which was awesome. And the the VIP event the night before was at this ultra, ultra modern home that all glass, like completely opens up. It was, it was wild. Um, was so that, that the was old Bob Hope estate? Was, no, up no, there? no, no, no. Uh, it's, it's a newer one, actually down near where I live. Uh, okay. And it was great being part of HRC, you know, the human rights campaign, and they had a number of people that flew in from Washington, D.C., and just to be a part of Pride, but also a part of HRC was really great. Um, I, too, was supposed to march in the parade with HRC, but I couldn't even walk <laughs> that day. I had done so much physical work the two days before for these events that I was like, wow, am I old. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, or I just, maybe you're just not used to physical work. Maybe you just got to get out there more often and get to the gym and get that body dude, in shape. Dude, I, I swim, I hike daily. I, I am physical. It was just that lifting and toning and rushing and running and... It was a lot, but well, it was, and the stress too. It has it, there's oh. a level of stress that sort of attacks your body too. That you know, yeah. when you're being physical and you're stressed. It's a whole different level. Yeah, that that was a lot, but it was great, and it was a great, like I said, to be a part of HRC on this amazing Pride weekend. So, happy Pride to all of us in the desert and everyone else, 
all over the world, wherever you are. And I think this is the last Pride of the year, so happy Gay Pride until next year, folks. Keep the Pride happening. Right? All right, so Michael, this season, we have been talking about all the different relationships that gay men our age and older kind of deal with in life. And today we're going to discuss our relationship with the holiday season. Or as I like to say, the holidays. The holiday season. Holidays. Holla. Holla. <laughs> this season brings so many different emotions up and out and to the forefront, whether it be excitement or anticipation, joy, uh, anxiety, stress, stress yeah. depression, feelings of being rejected from families, uh, Family drama, friendship drama, there is so much that goes with holidays. And like I said, just just the word is getting me a little, okay, here it comes. Uh, so what do you what are your emotions that surround holidays? How do you feel about this impending season that is marching towards us? Well, this holiday is a little different because there's an added bonus. Cher has a new Christmas album. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, so that's kind of exciting. That is. Um, you know, and then there's always my old fallback, the Barry Manilow Christmas album. So Okay, let's It just... is the holidays. I had to get them in. Come on. Great. Thank you very much. Let's, You're welcome. <laughs> let's march past that, and let's get back to you. What, what are the emotions that come up for you around the holiday season? Honestly, f- since the... 90s Mm -hmm. when I decided to spend the holidays with my chosen family instead of my biological family holidays for me have been glorious 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 and and that is not a word I use that often if you know me I am not sure I've ever heard you (laughs) say glorious um how so how are they glor how starting in the 90s did it become glorious for you So it was in 1995 where I decided not to go back East for the holidays because it was so stressful. And, um, and, and you're talking about going back to your family, to my biological family. Absolutely. Because it was stressful. It was a lot of work. Um, and there were restrictions, right? That's, what I could or couldn't talk about, or, you know, be careful. What's Ann Ann going to say? That's one of those things that rings in my head. I can't even tell you every time the holiday comes. And finally, there was that moment where I was like, I don't give a fuck what Ann Ann's got to say, you know? Um, okay. Yeah, it was, it was, it was an awesome revelatory moment that it dawned on me. I was doing it more out of obligation right. than a sense of joy or feeling like these were people who I wanted to surround myself with. And um, the very first Christmas I spent away from the East Coast, we got a group together from our softball team, and we got this ridiculous deal to Fiji over Christmas for like $800, including airfare and food. So like, how do you turn that down? So uh, we all did, we flew out Christmas Eve, um, and there was a window because you crossed the international date line, we were only going to have an hour of Christmas while we were in the air. And I <laughs> oh. had this brilliant idea of bringing a Christmas tree on the, tr- uh, the plane. Right. We all bought Christmas presents. We literally had trash bags full of Christmas presents. And obviously this was before 9-11. Um, and I bought a little, you know, little portable cassette player with Christmas music. And we had the captain announce when that hour of Christmas, we had that window. And we unwrapped presents, we played Christmas music, and we basically had the whole center of the plane to ourselves because it was, it was, the plane was virtually empty. Um, there was this one family who was with us and they had two younger kids. And when we started our celebration, the father comes over to us and he says, would you mind if our kids joined you? Because, you know, they're not getting to celebrate Christmas. And 
they're like sitting up there and we know they want right. to come back. And we're like, of course, send them back. You guys come back too. The staff gave us champagne. It cool. was seriously the best magical Christmas I've ever had. So um, let me ask you a question though. So you're, you knew this was happening and you brought a little Christmas tree. So Christmas must have really been something that was important to you. Or was it just, was it important to you just because it's a new me and I'm away from my family and I don't have to deal with that crap? Yeah, I always yeah. dreaded Christmas. Yeah, um, okay. See, that's what I wanted to ask. Like, And it, it was this, again, it was a, a revelatory moment for me when it was like, oh, I don't have to be stressed and feel this weight of my biological family because I have this other family now. Right. Um, yeah, and it was it was pretty fucking awesome. So then, you know, that was the first one. So then, you know, years go on, and, and do you still feel that way about the holidays? You Is it something you look forward to? Is it something that you're jumping up for joy about? Yes, it, yeah. it really is, because again, you know, I've, I have this unbelievable chosen family that we get together on the holidays, and it's just everything it should be. You know, and, and what there's is so that? much love, there's so much joy, there's so much, you know, banter and play and you know, all, all that stuff where you're, you, you just get to be you with absolutely no restrictions, no expectations, no judgment, and, and just celebrate. And okay. it's, a, it's a pretty magnificent feeling, you know. And are, um, you, are you a guy that uh, decorates your house for the holidays? Thanksgiving, Christmas. Do you have Do you have a Christmas tree? I do bring stuff out. I don't. Okay. Miss, I since I'm like when you're single, it's different. It takes a lot of work to set up the Christmas tree, so I haven't done it in a few years. Um, but when I'm coupled, I love you know Christmas everywhere in my place. All right. But, so let Let's just talk about that. So you and I are gay men of a certain age. Uh, do you find that that is the case with single men that they don't usually put that effort into it if they're alone uh, to surround themselves with, you know, the um, feeling? I, I think it's more that I'm probably on the less percentage side because I have friends who are single and they it's like Christmas threw up when you went over you to go over to <laughs> right. their house. It's everywhere. I have a friend who I met last night. Um, and he was like already decorating his Christmas tree. Wow. And I was like, are you serious? Wow. He was like, no, I've been doing it for the last two days. Really? Okay. Yeah. And mind you, here's, this, this is it for me. And I don't, I, you're probably not like this because you're you, but I love decorating. It's the taking it down. Right. And I know you enjoy the whole process of oh, it. Oh no, I hate the taking it down. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. I hate putting it back where it's supposed to be. And yeah, oh God, yeah. And I literally have hundreds of Disney ornaments, and each one of them is individually oh. wrapped in tissue paper and bubble wrap, so they don't break. So it's a lot of work. And you don't want to see those every year? You don't want to bring those out? Every year I pull some out. Okay. Good. I just don't do a full tray because, um, again, it's a lot of, a lot of work. Okay, it's so... Days. Back to your single friends who are our age. Some of the, some, as you said, are really into... It. Do you do you have friends, single gay men, who really hate the holidays and kind of go into that hiding? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah, and it, it, you know, it's because it is a rough time. It's really rough. Yeah, you know, where I think we all, we probably all experience some sort of influx of depression or sadness. Sure. Or. Because we're raised with this sort of fairy tale idea in the Courier and Ives TV commercials of this, you know, magnificent family and this snow covered yards and all this love exploding. And I think for a lot of us in the community, we didn't get to experience that freely when we were younger because we had to hide right. certain things about ourselves. So there wasn't that freedom. You know, did you experience that when you were younger? What was what were your experiences um, with Christmas as a young man? Well, when I was young, young, I loved Christmas. Uh, we did have that idyllic Christmas with all the families getting together. You know, our, our relatives getting together and gifts and decorating, and it was all 
quite magical. But as you said, then there came that point where I started having to hide who I actually was, um, which was very difficult. And then I moved away. I went to college and then I moved to New York. And then, um, but when it really started getting to me was when I was together with Scott, my husband, um, because I still, I couldn't be who I was. I couldn't be in a couple. I had to go back to my family. So I would be in, you know, with my family in Chicago, Christmas Eve, that was the big day. And then Christmas Day, I would fly back to LA and then do Christmas Day with Scott and his mother. Um, it was it was really difficult. And I knew that was not a very nice thing I was doing to Scott. I felt really guilty about yeah. that, uh, which made just the holidays coming. And I knew I was going to have to, uh, but I my family didn't want me to talk about who I was or bring Scott with me. And I, I just wasn't ready to make that cut, but then eventually I did. And I was right. like, you know what? I, I can't keep doing this. And, you know, Scott is my guy and I need to be with him for the holidays. But then again, that brought all that guilt and everyone, I know so many people can understand this, that guilt of not going to the family and not, you know, my parents are getting older and I'm not spending holidays with them anymore. But I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't keep pulling myself back and forth. Um, so, yeah, it, it, in my adult younger adult life it was really really difficult to kind of be the two people i was supposed to be for different people and but then it got better you know um although so I, I, let me let me ask you a question yeah. because you brought up the fact that you felt guilty you weren't going back yes home um what what did you feel guilty about well, I'm about not being with my family. Everyone was together except for me. Um, not being there for my parents who wanted me to be there. So I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask yeah. you a deeper question then. Sure. Um, I'm going to get a little heavy for a minute. Okay. Um, so, did you have resentment that you couldn't go home with Scott? I don't know if I had resentment, but I. I just didn't know how to juggle the two. And this is something that I, it's not just me. I know so many guys like me who were Absolutely. trying to, trying to still be what my family wanted me to be, but wanting to be who I really was, the the real me. And, and it was just the holidays put that pressure on. Like I could go through my everyday life and be those people and, go and visit my family and still be there with Scott. But it was the holidays that just piled on this guilt and these horrible feelings. Um, See, like and the reason I'm asking is because, yeah. okay, when I had that experience and that revelation of, the, I'm doing this out of obligation. Right. There was no sense of guilt. Um, it was a sense of relief. Because in my mind, I thought, these people aren't accepting me for who I am. So right. why, what is it in me that feels that obligation that I need to be home with them right. as opposed to home with people who love me and embrace me for who I was. Um, so I always try to figure out from somebody else who experienced those moments of guilt and continue to do it. Like what, what was that moment where you finally went, I'm not going to be, I'm not doing this anymore that it's, 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 totally on me. This is my holiday as well. Well, like I said, it wasn't about me. It was about Scott, that I was leaving Scott alone Christmas Eve. And I would call him like, oh, I'm at the family party, you know, like, and there he was at home, like sitting with our animals watching television. I felt so horrible yeah. and knew that I, can't, I just can't do this anymore. So like I said, I cut it off and then he and I, um, but then that was like the, that was a part of um, life where his mom was, was an older mother and then she uh, was living alone and had Alzheimer's and we were the, the two that were living in the same area. So we spent every holiday with her then and we were, you know, taking care of her. And then after she passed, this is something that I know Again, so many gay men my age have experienced after she passed, 
because Scott and I spent every then holiday with her, we were like, now what? Where everybody already has their traditions that they're doing. Everyone has their groups of people that they're going with. And we were alone and we were like, oh, <laughs> okay, now what? You know, and it that sent me towards another like depression. Here comes the holidays. We're going to be alone. We have nothing to do. And it, I mean, yes, we were invited to go places, but I'm that guy who's like, they're just asking because we have nothing to do and they already have all their friends and we're just another person and I don't want to do, you know. So a couple, after a couple years of that, uh, and I'm sorry to keep talking about this, but I've just been through all these different levels. No, I think, I, it's great. Honestly, it's great. It's honestly, I, you know, it's, I, I love it when you share like this because you don't often do it. So I really appreciate your indulging me and asking you these questions because it's important. So after a few years of doing the, you know, let's just go to a movie and have Chinese food on Christmas, you know, and the two of us sitting at a table, tears (laughs) going down my, (laughs) my cheeks, like I'm such a loser. But then we started something. Uh, which was the most amazing thing because I was so depressed about the holidays. I had nothing to do. And no, we started a orphan Christmas. So we just, I was just like, nope, that's it. We're going to decorate the house. We're going to just invite whoever. I put things on Facebook saying, hey, if anyone doesn't have anywhere to go, come to our house. And the first few years, it was like on Christmas Day, and we would have people come in their pajamas, and we would just have, Scott makes this amazing hot chocolate that we would spike with marshmallow vodka and peppermint schnapps and and bake cookies and eat turkey. And it it was so great. And it first started out just, you know, just a few people would show up, a lot of gay guys our age. Yep. were in the same positions like they had nowhere to go they had not you know they couldn't go back to their families anymore they and it built and built and built and the last the last one we had right before we moved before covid or during covid was you know by then we were tenting the backyard and putting a stage over the pool and we had over a hundred people showing up and our our christmas party became the thing that people were looking forward to especially that hot chocolate of Scott's. Um, And then, you know, we started all these great new traditions ourselves. um, And it came out of being very depressed and sad about the holidays to something to look forward to. Because then, as you know, you came a few years. um, Every year had a theme, of course, if you haven't met me. (laughs) That's who I am. (laughs) You know, there was like the silver year, the plaid year, the... Uh, One of my favorite years was, I don't know what I called it, it like the pine cone year, where I I brought in all these white shag rugs to kind of be snow banks all over my house. And uh, yeah, so that like that was fun and something to look forward to. And that's something that I I pass on to everyone out there. Like if you do feel like you have no traditions, like you have nowhere to go, that you're alone, um, to do something like that. Start Start your own. own. Absolutely. it took me from sitting at a, you know, whatever Chinese restaurant with tears streaming down my face to being excited about, yeah. you know, cause I also bought gifts for everyone. Cause if, you know, you're coming to my house, you're getting a gift cause maybe you don't, there's no one giving you a Christmas gift. So I wanted to make sure that everyone had a place to go and a, that they got a gift. So I would be out buying my gifts and, oh, it was just, it was such such a really happy moment for me then. Um, but another thing that I wanted to mention about holidays, and this includes you, Michael, uh, during that period of where Scott and I were alone, um, a mutual friend of ours, Joe, invited us to Thanksgiving. And said, and I was, of course, doing that, like, no, no, it's okay. No, we've got something to do. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> you know? And he's like, no, no, just come. People just show up, whatever. Yeah. And, and we did. And 
that's, you know, probably the time that I met you. And yeah. it was all of, again, this whole group of misfit people uh, who all just came together and and kind of created this family. Uh, and that was a lovely, lovely Thanksgiving. And we went for a number of years. Uh, it was great. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, and that's a tradition that me and the guys from the softball team created that following Thanksgiving because we had such a great time. Yeah. That Christmas being together, we were like, I'll cook. I love to cook. Yeah. So, but I have one rule. I don't clean after the meal is served. That is on you all. And they were like, fine. And it still happens because that's, yeah. you know, that's Joe. He's in the kitchen washing dishes. And uh, it grew from the first Thanksgiving. I think there were like maybe eight of us to now it's like 40 and 50 people because the door is wide open. Yeah. That's and I've always thing. said to people, if you're invited once, you're invited for the rest of your life. So please don't ask because, you know, when you're preparing for that many people, sometimes things slip your mind and extending an invitation every year is one of those things for me. So I'm like, the door's always open. You know when we start and we go all night. So just come on over. And that's, it's funny. I spent 32 years truly disliking holidays and yeah. dreading them. And then from that moment on, it's been, it's been spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to, you know, since we, Scott and I have moved to Palm Springs, we're starting over again, right? And our first Christmas here, even though it was part of COVID, uh, or COVID was still hanging around, there was that like, what are we going to do? We don't know any people here. I don't want to, again, people already have their traditions. No one wants us to be involved in it. But, you know, that's not the case. No. Um, that, see, that's what we, we have to get out of our heads. Exactly. Is that... And I think that's what leads to some of the depression that surrounds the holidays is we feel alone. Right. We feel separate. We feel isolated. And to realize that there's a whole lot of other people in our community who are feeling that same thing. So start a tradition. Like you exactly. said, put something up on Facebook and says, anybody who doesn't have anything to do on Christmas Day, right. let's get together. Let's go to a restaurant or come on over. I'm going to have appetizers and it's a potluck. Bring what you want to bring. Right. And you'd be surprised how many people are going to show up at your door. And again, it doesn't have to, I know, you know, holidays not only bring all these emotions, but also it's like, oh my God, it's so expensive. The holidays are so yeah. expensive. And yeah, like if you're coming to my house, you're not bringing a thing. I'm having a caterer. We're going to deal with that. But that's me. That's who I am. There are other, like you don't have to spend that money. Like you had said, Let's do just do appetizers. Luck. Let's do, do a, a potluck. Luck. Absolutely. Let's just, just come and let's make cookies. It doesn't really matter. Nope. The food doesn't matter. It's just being with somebody else, right? To just kind of have that connection with another person and be, you know, like I said, just to have someone say Happy Christmas or Merry Christmas or Absolutely. whatever it is that you're celebrating, you know? Um because y'all could honestly order pizza when everybody gets there, but it's about the community that you've created. Exactly. To experience what the holidays should actually be. And that's just joyful and about, about opening a door that we don't normally open the rest of the year where there's a sense of hope and just, you know, a sense of joy and, and belonging. And, um, oh, that's definitely, it, those are the feelings that you are going to leave with and start the new year with yeah. that hope and joy. And wow, I made a connection and maybe I met a new friend or, you know, that can carry me through the next year and I won't feel so alone. And, you know, why I've been talking so much about myself is because I, through the holidays, I have experienced every freaking emotion you possibly could, starting as a kid with the joy and having these magical holidays with my family to then not fitting in and not feeling like I can be myself to depression and guilt and, you know, more guilt with my husband and feeling so isolated and alone. Even though my husband was sitting right next to me, yeah. I felt the two of us were alone. And what can we do? And, and I think a lot of us in our community who are our age have experienced all of these emotions exactly. as well. Exactly. And I think that's why it's 
really hugely important that you were able to open up the way you did and share a little bit more of yourself than usually you're willing to. So again, I want to thank you for that because it is, it is hugely important that no, other people I, realize they're not the only ones who are experiencing these emotions. I totally get it. And that's why I do want to share because yeah. not only did I feel those feelings, but I freaking did something about it. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm not doing that again. I'm not spending another year crying by myself, feeling miserable. I'm not spending another year being guilty because I'm leaving my husband. I'm not feeling guilty because of my parents. I dealt with it and I created new experiences, new traditions, just as you and I were both new to us to a new city. We have to start new traditions, new things. I'm not sitting in my house anymore going like, oh, I'm new to Palm Springs. No one likes me, whatever. I'm like, no, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to put myself out there. Yeah. But for, I'm just going to point out that some of yeah. us who aren't as extrovert as you are, it's it adds another layer of challenge. And oh. me being that Eeyore, I'm, I really do want to challenge people out there who yeah. who experience things the way that I do and sometimes that's way off center from maybe the way the rest of the world experiences emotions. Um seriously, please push yourself and again, just invite one person over the house. It's going to change exactly. your entire day. Yeah. Just one person that you feel safe with, exactly. if that's all it takes. And I, th it, I swear to you, like, again, I'm going to go back to like when I was 32 and experienced that for the first time. It was the Grinch cartoon where at the end his heart expanded. Like, I felt that. Yeah. And I still do. Every time I'm around friends for the holiday, I feel that. And it's such a... It's such a unique experience because, you know, in our society, we limit, we limit it to these few weeks of the year when that's what it should be every freaking day. Right. And we forget about it. it. It's like the Christmas tree gets packed away in the box. It doesn't come out until the next Thanksgiving. And then we have that six week period where that's what we experience, right? Yeah. So yeah. keep the tree out of the box a little longer if you can. Or... Don't take the tree out. It's, it, you know, it, like we said, it's not about food. It's not about having a tree. Maybe you don't want to decorate. I was using decorate. the tree as a metaphor. I got it. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying it, you don't have to have all of the outward parts of a holiday. It's more important that inside you feel, you know, accepted and part of whatever and happier. And yeah. So, yeah, like you said, one person, that can change it. Um, and I, I do this thing that... Uh, I always have one Christmas ornament out wherever I live so that it does remind me, even if it's like in June. And you know how sometimes you have something in your house and you don't see it for, you just don't see it anymore, right? You walk by it a hundred times, you don't notice it, but then every once in a while you walk by and oh, there's a Christmas ornament and it just makes you smile and feel happy. Leave one of your Christmas ornaments out all oh, year. I would, I would panic. Get <laughs> time I, I would see it and, and I would get like, oh, oh my God. Uh, okay. Yeah. Put it on your nightstand. No, put it, put you. it, you know, put it somewhere where only you're going to run into it occasionally. No, I'm It's, it's kind of neat. Yeah. Okay. You know? Cool. But also I want to, um, not challenge, but ask our fellow gay men over 50 out there who, who do enjoy the holidays, who have lovely parties and lovely friends and groups of friends to kind of open the door a little bit wider to those people that don't have somewhere to go or you know maybe someone said no no it's i'm fine whatever ask again yeah, you know take, take that little extra yeah. moment to to needle them a little more because exactly. when somebody says oh i'm fine yeah, no, they're it's not fine. they're usually not and no. so push them push them beyond their boundaries and make them come go pick them up say i'm coming to get you at five o'clock and you're coming yeah that's awesome because I mean, I've done that to people too, where it's like, oh, you know, just bring me a plate of food. I'm like, no, bitch, I'm coming to pick you up and you can make your own plate of food. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we, we would like all of our, you know, fellow gay men over 50 out there to have better experiences at ho holidays. Um, and whether that is, you know, taking that big step out into the light and doing something on your own or for those other guys who already have things happening to, like I said, open that door a little bit wider and look for somebody who might need a little extra push or shove or yeah. pull or whatever that is. And we're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something that we're going to be doing here at No Two Gays About It. We're starting a private community page. 
so that you guys can communicate with each other no matter where you are and you know maybe build a community in a way that you might not have previously and because there, there are the gay men of palm springs pages right and there are people all over the world who are part of those pages and it's always interesting to me to watch the posts on there where you know somebody who lives in minnesota will touch base with somebody else who lives in Minnesota. And now all of a sudden they know somebody else in their same area. So we're going to be doing that um, oh, cool. here at No Two Gays. And we're going to give you more information on that once the page is solid. And uh, we, it's, uh, it's going to be called No Two Gays Community. Um, and yeah, it's going to be completely private. So what you guys discuss there, it's not going to be an open page. You can feel safe. You can be vulnerable if you want. Um, and we're going to encourage everybody to come and maybe play with each other that way and, I'm sorry, and find what? new connections. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, Michael, have put my mind into that gutter. I just want you to know that. Um, Rude. Everything you're I'm teaching... I'm actually me, also a little proud of that, quite frankly. As you should be. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, you're welcome. It's taken a lot. So um, I do want to just talk a little bit more about the holidays and the whole thing of... Um, mental health during the holidays. You found some really great info on ways to combat uh, some of the negativity and, and kind of bring a healthier mental uh, health. That doesn't make sense, but a uh, healthy mental health attitude about the holidays. So do you yeah. want to share some of that with us? Sure. Um, I think the first thing that maybe you might want to do if you're feeling like you're going home for the holidays and you're regretting it or you're dreading it is to is to have a serious conversation with yourself about why you're doing it. Is it just a sense of obligation? And then maybe sort of figure out, well, you know what, I don't need to go home for the holidays. I'll go see them in June and spend yeah. the holidays with folks who support you for who you are. Like seriously, take a good look at the reasons why, if you are experiencing stress and angst, why you're putting yourself in that position. Right. And I think for a lot of us, because I know it was for me, it was obligation. Oh, they're family. Um, and I dreaded it every fucking year. Sure. So um, that would be one. Okay. And if you do go home and you are experiencing stress, take a break. Walk away. Give yourself the space to go for a walk. Clear your head. And again, have a conversation with yourself. Why am I here? Um. You know, and it may be a 50-50 split. You know, there are people who you love in your family and you want to see. And then there are those other people who just can't accept you. Right. So then just focus on the folks who do. Spend the time with them and avoid the rest of them. You know? Good. Good to That's go. another one. Yeah. What else? And another thing you could do is actually practice assertiveness. Ooh, that's a tough one. It is a tough one for a lot of people. You don't have to be confrontational. But, you know... Those people who say, well, oh, you know, when are you going to get married? Or how come you're still single? And if you're not, say, yeah. well, I'm not single. I have a husband or I have a boyfriend or I am dating somebody. And if they're like, oh, I don't want to hear that. And it's like, why would you ask me the question, number one? And number right. two, it is who I am. And you shouldn't feel like you have to hide that under a bushel, you know, that you can be who you are in an environment that isn't necessarily accepting because you never know. One of those people might go, oh, tell me more. And you right. weren't giving them the credit that they were capable of doing that. You know, and, can I just jump in here for a second? Yeah, that, absolutely. That happened to me at my father's funeral. My aunt, who very sweet, Catholic, very Catholic woman. You know, we never ever were able to discuss anything about my personal life or anything. She came up to me at the funeral and said, Where is he? Why didn't you bring oh, him with that's you? Beautiful. Oh my God, that's amazing. Right? And I was like, Oh my God. You're going like, to make me cry. <laughs> did I just spend the last whatever 15 years hiding from you and I didn't need to? Yeah, because you know? sometimes we don't give people enough credit that maybe they can have that conversation with us. You know who surprised yeah. me the most? It mm. was my Sicilian grandmother, first generation, who, when I came out, 
open armed. Yeah. And she was the one who I was worried about most. And I guess because she was the one who I loved the most. So there was more to, to lose, you know, in my mind. Right. And her willingness to just go, I don't care, Michael. Yeah. Was, and I wasn't giving her that credit. And so that was a valuable lesson I learned very young. Give people the credit that maybe, maybe they are willing to have that conversation with you. Yeah. Another, another great thing to bring home to the holidays. Yeah. Maybe. Try it. Right? Acceptance. Not okay, just for ourselves, but for them. Right. Um, and then if, if you do go home for the holidays, stay connected to the folks in your life who support you. Use a phone. Use a text. Um, you know, just to touch base with those folks who go, it's going to be okay. You're only right. going to be there for another couple of days. You got yeah. this. <laughs> you need those people, right? Yeah, you totally need those. All right, so just, cool. You know, just a few pointers or maybe a little, uh, you know, info that you might want to try to put into practice. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, yeah, this holiday crap. Wow, there's a lot. There's a lot, but we all get it. We get that there's a lot, and you know, we all just have to be there for each other, which is awesome. Um, you know, before we end today, we normally talk about things that are really bugging us. Um, would you like to do a little side eye this, this week, Michael? You know what? I don't think I want to, because okay, I, I do want to live in that joy. So, right. you know, nice. so, let's you have know a what? happy gay moment of opening our door to people who say no. There you go. Fantastic. And pushing them to walk through it. Helping them to get over whatever these bad yeah. feelings are around the holidays and try to bring joy back into their lives. Because, damn, that's going to make you feel so much better yeah. about your holidays as well and so good about yourself. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, send that out to all of our gay men over 50 out there to to reach out to somebody who might need it this holiday season. Because we've all been there. We all Absolutely. know it. We know those horrible feelings. Don't let someone feel that way, you know? Cool. All yeah. right. So, and you know, happy holidays to everybody. And let's, let's try to have a stress-free, joy-filled six freaking weeks. You know what, Michael? That's never going to happen. There's going to be so much stress happening around the holidays, no matter what, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It, there's, oh, yeah. you know, there's stress in life. Let's be real. Exactly. But, you know, you do have that moment. Of, again, it goes back to one of those things I said. Step away for a minute. But we can certainly search for the joy. Absolutely. Uh, that's for sure. And, you know, Michael, if you ever have those dark moments during this holiday season, you know you can call me. I'll be there for you. And I know that you will be there for me. 100%. Uh, so everyone else, be there for your friends as well. And we want to hear about all of your holidays. What are you doing out there? What are you doing for other people? How, how Send are you us all... pictures of your Christmas trees. Yeah, totally. Oh, let's do that. On our new Facebook community page. Send your pictures of your, your well, holidays. Well, let's get that up and running completely, which will be about another week. So, but okay, yeah, send cool. them on Instagram. Send us um, on our, our normal Facebook page at No Two Gays About It. Well, how, how can they do that? How can they reach out to us? Um, we are on every aspect of social media under No Two Gays About It. And that is the number two, which I'm sure most of you know by now. So no, the number two gays about it. Great. And that's pretty much across the board. Twitter. Nope. Sorry. Uh, isn't that funny? I mentioned mm -hmm. the one we're not on. <laughs> yeah. We're not on Twitter. <laughs> but everywhere else, including TikTok and threads and Instagram. And you need to watch us on YouTube because there is nothing scarier than seeing no. the two of us um, and if you want to see some real side eye you got to see the looks tom gives me half the time <laughs> i do it's constant side eye to michael so you should yeah. check us out go to youtube no two gays about it the number two and like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that little bell so anytime that we have a new episode or a new little short you will be notified so that you can see both Michael and I, in all of our, and I'm using Michael's word of the day, glorious, um, whatever we are here. Glorious so, gloriousness. Glorious gloriousness. Fantastic. <laughs> all right. So let's take that glorious gloriousness and take it all the way through the holidays. So until next time, Michael. Until next time. Thank you, everybody out there for listening. Stay strong through the holidays. That's what we're going to say. 
Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. I just got the side eye. <laughs>